Can I turn my lights off now, Ludicor? No. Why is there a black screen? Oh, there, there, there we go. There we go. It's just the suspense, the calm before the storm. Okay. I, I thought we forgot to turn on the lights in game. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number six in the series between the Muslim and the Viper. Ludicor? I'll let you take us away as to who's spawning down on the south side of the map. Well, we do have, representing Team Lockwood, in the French in red, the Muslim. And on the north, we do have, representing Gamer Legion, in blue. Spawning is the Mongols, and going for an early barracks, we've got Pause Champ. I've seen a freeze, but oh, we're good. Uh, it is the Viper, the one, the only, the Viper. And look at him sitting back here. He's... What is happening right now? I'm not sure if you saw that. He had a whole bunch of sheep just chilling out. He's literally killing the sheep of the scout. Did I mean, you see I, that? He I, I can see that being a thing. You know, if it's not mine, it should not be yours either. That's the concept over here for Viper. You can't kill the enemy scout. Might as well try to kill the sheep that's trailing him. And let's see if the Muslim can actually block that barracks placement. Seems like that's going to be the case. Yeah, Viper going to be heading back to the pavilion with his... Tail between his legs, unfortunate for him. This is going to delay any sort of aggression, and it's going to be a great little opening here for Dumbus. And this is exactly what he wants. And you can see that age up already in queue for him. And now Viper going to be forced. This is the consequence of not going for that early spearman. If he had just put out a single spearman, he would have been able to deny those scouts. But now everything has just gone to shatters for the Viper because now that Uvu is really going to be under pressure from this early scout opening. And the Uvu is very far away from that town center, actually. Viper's got a good town center spot with the Mongols over here. It's right next to the forest, and of course, more importantly, right next to the gold, so you can skip your Gur. But guess what? Fuel Age already coming in here for the Muslim. Like, by the time Viper gets anything out of that barracks, his opponent is already going to be up to fuel, and this could be devastating for Viper. I mean, he invested into that barracks, and he's yet to see any return value from it. If the Muslim goes for a range immediately upon hitting Feudal Age, this is going to spell disaster for Viper. Yeah, this could be really tough. Now, one of the other things to mention is that obviously Mongols have a pretty poor win rate against the French uh, on this map. Um, but one of the things to note, and you can see just the Muslim being absolutely terrible. When it comes to this matchup, okay, even if things go perfectly, even if things go perfectly for the Mongol player, the French is still very capable, very easily able to defend against that aggression. But we haven't th seen things go perfectly. We've seen Demusan already open up with aggression, double scouts, burning down that Uvu, preventing a barracks from being put down, and subsequently delays production of Spearman. He forces out an expensive single Spearman. It's not looking good for Viper already. And this is not the game that he wants to have right here, right now, because this is obviously it's King of the Hill. It's his home map. This is he's got a, 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 a he should have a, a plan for this map. Uh, but unfortunately, it seems like the Muslim just puts a big wedge in between it and says, nope. And imagine the momentum for the Muslim going into game number seven if he wins this. We've talked about this one for the Muslim so far or so close yet so far for some of the games that he has played. He had some winnable games in game number one, for example, wasn't able to finish them. He started finishing games with the Chinese um, previously on Altai with the English. If he can find a way to capitalize on the advantage that he currently has, we could be looking at game number seven with the Muslim going in with a high morale, knowing that, hey, I got a legitimate shot at upsetting Viper here. Yeah, you're 100% on the money with that. And it means that he's going to have that tempo advantage, isn't he? Because he's won that get that English mirror. Now it comes into this game. If he wins this one, then he's all of a sudden up two games in the last two games. That's that's incredible momentum for him, and it's going to be difficult for Viper. Uh, interestingly, did Viper have the Rus available to him on this map? I think Viper had the Rus available, yes. and he's pulled the Rus out before on this map. It's curious why he didn't go with them here. Why did he go with the Mongols here? Um, I guess it comes down to what the last map is going to be, and I actually don't remember what the last map is, but I will actually look it up for you here, because I'm, I'm curious. I'm guessing Mongolian Heights. Um, that would be that would be a somewhat surprising because Mongolian Heights is a great map for Mongols, but I'll have to double check. So hold on for a sec. We're going to. All right. Well, we got out. a second town center coming down for Viper. He's gathering up 360 stones, so probably going to be looking to drop arrow slits as well as that second town center. Uh, but uh, now up to 376, 77, so 78. It looks like he's just going to be cashing out. Actually, I, I just realized Viper's playing the Mongols. I'm I'm a little bit special. <laughs> well, at least there it is was, some stone being It was the Muslims. 
It was the Muslim stone I was looking at uh, <laughs> when I saw the villagers gathering it up. Uh, Viper's account was the one that I was looking at as it was going up. And I'm like, why is it trickling up like that? Is, are his villagers just dropping it off? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a special kind of special. Uh, don't worry, I still enjoy casting with you. Anyways, indeed, last map <laughs> is Mongolian Heights, which would leave Viper with Rus or... or... the HRE uh, for that map. Ooh, okay, and it would leave the Muslim with the HRE or the Mongols. Ooh. That's, that's gonna cool. be a juicy one. Like, I, I, I'm not oh. gonna lie, I'm rooting for game number seven over here because I really want to see too, that. Me too, me too. Me too. And look, I'm rooting for a game number seven and everything's going right for the Muslim at this point because we often talk about this, you know, French versus Mongols. Okay, Mongols are going to be at an advantage going into Castle Age. If if they get up to the Castle Age and no damage has been done uh, to the Mongol player, then typically the Mongol player should be in a great spot. But the problem is if the Muslim goes for a second town center, then all of a sudden the playing field is not even. And now we can see that archers are also coming out here for the Muslim He's looking to apply pressure over onto that north side. And we can see him coming out here, looking to try and cause some havoc in the in the wood line, in the farm line, or rather in the sheep line of the Viper. And as long as you can maintain that pressure on that Ovu, that's already a pretty big advantage for you because this is where the Mongols can spend their stone on. Like early game, you don't want to get those improved upgrades. You're always talking about double production. So if you can maintain that pressure on that Ovu, you can potentially cut off the opponent from that double production. Viper did drop a tower over there, so he's safe for the time being. And it looks like he's gonna go double horseman. Love the walls from the Muslim. Honestly, I wouldn't mind him just fully walling up and saying, okay, you can't push me right now. I can just go two town centers. And like by the time you can start doing damage, I'll be up by 25 villagers and we can start talking business. This is sort of the new school French play style where you just go greedy. And by the time you can get punished for it, it's already too late for the opponent. And the big thing to remember in this matchup, okay, is things did not go well for Viper at the beginning. Ideally, in a, in a perfect world, Viper drops down his Uvu, he drops down the barracks on top of it, two spearmen come out, two by two, with a villager in tow, he puts a, a um, he puts a, 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 an outpost on top of the gold, the spearmen jump inside, he puts an outpost on top of the berries, the spearmen jump inside, and he delays his enemy. And then behind this, he's going fast castle, but look at Viper right now, he is struggling, he is struggling, there are archers, there are knights in his base, he can't even gather the gold to get up to the next age because he's being idled, it is not going well for him and behind this the muslim is doing everything right he's got the second town center up he's causing harm to viper he's trying to deny you can see he's trying to deny that landmark he knows that that landmark's going to be going up viper's going to put it down somewhere and now that knight is hovering looking to cause even more damage and viper is really struggling right here because the muslim he's got the win condition he's got the second town center yeah, that's exactly it. And Viper, as you pointed out, um, he's going Castle Age over here. In fact, he canceled the horseman that he initially queued up to go up to Castle. But if you look at the Muslim's resources, he's going to be behind by at most a minute. But the Muslim already up by nine villagers. Some of that obviously will be offset by the step redoubt and the efficiency increase that you get on your gold miners. Some of that could be offset by relics being gathered by Viper. But long term, on a map like this, Having that extra second town center is going to be a massive power spike for the Muslim. And we can see that materialize once he hits that 60, 70 villager mark. Yeah, he's doing really well at this point, honestly. Um, a, a lot of people would look at this and say, okay, Viper's not in a terrible position. I would kind of disagree with that. And the reason why is because of the map, King of the Hill. Viper, what is his window back into this? His window back into this is very heavy, in my opinion, very heavy lances. That would be his go-to, okay? But the problem is, even if he does that, let's say in a, in a, in a hypothetical, he, he does that, he goes heavy lances. He's got nowhere to raid. He's got nowhere to raid because the Muslim has completely walled up, which means he buys himself time. And now we see that age up coming through for the Muslim. I'm curious, do we dare see a Royal Institute coming out for him? And he goes into Royal Bloodlines, mass knights. This could be an option for him. Let's see how he plays it because that age up is coming through. We'll jump in over onto his perspective and see as those spearmen come out and put some pressure down. It's going to be a guild hall, damn it. Mm, I, I could have understood the Royal Institute, but the idea is that you're playing for timings over here. And obviously one of the equa or one of the part of the equation here is that you don't want to play post-imperial. In fact, that's not even a thing on this map because someone is going to start that timer in the middle. But what you get with the guild hall is that intermediate area of resource pull-off. When you pull it off at like 600, 700, that gives you enough momentum to secure that middle for yourself, start fortifying it. So I can see the idea behind using the guild hall here because 
having a sudden influx of like six, 700 resources in this mid castle age uh, stage of the game could be pretty impactful and that could help you secure that middle area. Yeah, we now see the pressure beginning to come out. Viper looking to try and siege down a gate on this front side. The Muslim at the same time going to be looking to be a bit more defensive. We can see double crossbow as well as double knights going to be coming out for the Viper. He senses that there might be a time to shine and indeed the time is now. If somehow Viper manages to pull out a victory, despite the Muslim basically doing what would be called textbook at this point, uh, you would definitely be wondering how the heck he manages to do it. Now, I've, 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 I've cursed him once before. In the first game in this series, it was yeah. French versus Delhi, and it didn't look pretty. Uh, I'm just going to try and keep my mouth out of this one. De Muslim, you do you, and Viper will follow along <laughs> on your side, and hopefully everything just goes to plan, but we'll see how he makes it up because there is a lot of units coming out for Viper already. Yeah, obviously he's going to use up all the stone that he has accumulated over the course of the game, you know, the one that trickled in over time. And that's going to help getting those initial units on the battlefield. So part of the reason why Viper right now is the better numbers is that. But obviously, we're entering the stage where that 19 villager lead for the Muslim is going to start showing. Um, he has the guild hall, I assume, set on gold. Although I can see him setting it on food as well, actually. It would be interesting to see what's exactly the case with that guild hall. I, I do like stone on this map. I feel like stone is actually a pretty decent investment because obviously point. you can throw it you can throw it out on a keep, but I suspect it's probably just going to be gold uh, because the only gold that he's got available is that one in his base. Uh, so he might need to use it in a bit of a pinch. But now moving out, a, a single knight going to get caught and that's going to be the second knight that gets thrown away here by the Muslim. So he's going to be careful not to, not to really cause himself unnecessary losses like this because everything is going to count when it comes to this matchup as that knight does go down. Yeah, it, it's going to be an impactful knight being lost over there. Looks like we're now going to see some Arbletria being added as well. Um, in the meantime, Viper is starting to set up some outposts in the middle, getting those Spring Oldham placements going. The Muslim isn't really rushing this. He's aware that if he starts pushing out right now, those Spring Old Towers will wipe him out. He doesn't have the critical mass to overrun them. So the Muslim is playing for that timing push. He wants to drag this out as long as possible, let him get to like 90 villagers to 100 villagers, and then unleash hell. Because right now, Viper is already behind by 25 villagers, some of that being partially offset by the Sacred Site the relics that will be brought in and of course the stepper out. But in the next few minutes, we could see the Muslim getting into like 90 villagers. And I would say that the target for the Muslim for his push should be around the six minute mark on that timer. That should be his ideal balance between having a good eco to sustain a push and having the critical mass of army that is sufficient to push the middle. Yeah, it's important that you start getting a roll on those those outposts as soon as you can. This is something that we've seen players do where they kind of leave the push a little bit too late and they get caught out by just not expecting there to be so much stuff up the top there. Uh, and that's definitely going to be something that Viper's able to do. We can see he's got outposts up there already. More units now moving around over on this eastern side, looking to put a bit, a bit of pressure over towards this, uh, this berry patch as well as a stone mine, but the Muslim not out there just yet. Yeah, he's going to have some Royal Knights out there. Obviously, night on night, this is a battle that the French will win. And it looks like the attack speed arrow was popped over here by Viper, which allows the Muslim to just disengage. No speed arrow out here for our blue player, the Muslim. Already up by 30 villagers, though. And it looks like now we're seeing the Gambesons being added. Candled saddles. Slowly but surely, you're grabbing those French unique upgrades that's going to make that knight and Arbaletria composition so deadly. Yeah, this is exactly it. And now also getting in the veteran archers. So... Everything is looking a good for Demuslim at this point. He is obviously on a timer, uh, but the village account, you can see a 32 village difference between him and the Viper at this point. I'd love to take a look at that gold mine that he's got in his base because that's the only real accessible gold he's got. And if that one g does dry up, then it's going to be very, very difficult for him uh, to, to play this game out, you know, the way that he wants to. And reinforcements at the top now are uh, going to be built up there. Uh, we'll take a look now. Risky. Yeah, there's the gold mine. 200 gold left Ooh. on that bad boy. That ain't good. That, that is not good because he's going to have to push out. And you can see he's just taken out the gold of the guild hall. Uh, so he doesn't have a super large amount. He's going to have to move up onto this middle platform if he wants to take it. And Viper might recognize that. Could be Kamikaze Castle even. Look at the stone that the Muslim has. And we talked about this with the Abbasid matchup. Another civilization that could easily afford to lose like 20, 25 villagers, making a castle that is guaranteed to go up could be the French. We have seen that over and over again. French going for a massive eco and then just sending in 25 villagers, knowing that it doesn't matter that they lose 15 of them, but they do get a keep up. And the Muslim at this point, I can see him going for double keeps in the middle. He has enough army to get a keep up. He's going to lose villagers in the process. 
But if he wants to go for that, it might be his only shot, actually, because as he pointed out, he's running low on gold. And if you look at his backup gold, that's on the front. So that is not something that's accessible right now. Yeah, we can see that he does have an a trebuchet in queue. Uh, so probably going to be looking to take out that very first outpost uh, that is on the uh, that is on that gold mine. But we do see Springles now coming up, and Viper might have found himself a little bit of a way back into this game. It's going to be because of the resource distribution. Obviously, we talked a bit earlier about this being king of the hill, but we once again see that there is a lack of extra resources down here. It means if you do control the hill, that you do potentially control the game. Interesting to note though that a second gold did spawn down on that plateau or down on that lower part for the Viper. And now keep going to be coming up, going to be looked to denied as all of the Knights or rather Lancers move out for Demuz or for the Viper. Demuz I'm going to be falling back with his villagers and realize there's way too much stuff here. And now Viper is looking like he might be in a pretty decent position. He's taking control of the hill. Everything that Demuz did up until this point was textbook, but unfortunately didn't get that second gold on the low ground and it might cost him here because he is in a very difficult position. It's a very delicate balance of going for an eco-focused approach and pushing out late and going for that middle area. Viper is now holding the middle with six minutes left to go. Castle once again attempted here by the Muslim, but he simply can't place it. And now reinforcing this army is not a possibility for the Muslim. He's completely out of gold and that Guildfall probably doesn't have more than a couple hundred gold in there. Timer is running short here and suddenly Viper, he's looking like he's in a great position with four relics on the bank having that sacred site. But most importantly, it is the Muslim who is just unable to field an army that's capable of pushing this. Yeah, this is where it gets really hard. You can see he's got 440 gold in that guild hall at the moment. So he has got a little bit of a bank to work with. But that trebuchet, unfortunate for him, this, this positioning, it's just going to be so difficult for him to even gain a foothold. And remember, he's going to have to challenge that sacred site as well. The trebuchet, it's the last one that he's got remaining. He needs to make sure it doesn't die here. He's going to try and get it back. The Springwoods almost managing to take it out. And we can see that Dumusim really struggling right now as Viper sits very happily on top of that hill as the king. And you would prefer to wait with that guild hall to pull off the gold, but the more you wait, the larger Viper's army is gonna be. If Viper had a trebuchet, he could take down these castles immediately. As they're being built, this castle is gonna be attempted here by the Muslim. This has to go up, otherwise, I don't see him breaking out here. This isn't looking good. He oh, loses no. the trebuchet. The villagers getting pulled, trying to drop oh, down that team. It's jam. not looking pretty right now. This could be the end of it all. Viper looking incredible with the crossbows on the backside. All the villagers going to be going down, trying to get that keep up. The Muslim looking like he might be in trouble. Viper looking at, he senses blood in the water. You can see the units and the Muslim taps out. Good game gets called. And the, somehow Viper finds a way back into this game and wins the series 4-2. So close, yet so far for the Muslim in this set. He has had so many good games. Every single one of these games were quite competitive. It's just the fact that Viper was able to finish more games than the Muslim could. The Muslim had a great start in this game, but then he decided to go for a more eco-focused approach and that got punished pretty heavily by Viper over here. The Muslim was confident he can break out, but then he had to realize that Viper, with the four relics powering his eco, with that four position set up with all the Yam network towers, the spring holds, it was just a little too late to push out. And with that, Viper is going to secure another win for himself, which almost guarantees him a spot in the playoffs. In fact, I don't know if there is any scenario or the um, single elimination part of the playoffs rather. I don't know if there is a scenario where Viper would be out versus for the Muslim. The equation is very simple. If Wham loses to Beastie in the set that's coming up, the Muslim story in Golden League ends. If Wham is able to upset Beastie, the Muslim still has a shot last, uh, next weekend. That's going to be it, exactly. But, uh, I mean, we, I just want to talk about that last map. I mean, the big thing for me is just not having a gold, a, a secondary gold. If we if we go back and think about it, Viper had a gold under his town center that he, his town center was sitting next to. He also had a second gold that was out past his Uvu. The Muslim had no second gold. The next gold that he had was quite literally up on top of that hill. And he needed to make a move for it. And obviously, that's not something that you come into the game thinking about. You're not thinking, okay, when when the Mongol player is, you know, looking to try and push me with outposts, I'm going to react by going for a second town center because that's the right, that's the textbook play because you, you stopped that. So you've bought yourself time. But all of a sudden, we see that it still comes up short. It still comes up short because unfortunately for him, the gold spawn, it, it just wasn't there.